Righty. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Poland. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. I timed my talk last night. It was an hour-long talk, so this will be a much, much sped-up version. Uh, <laughs> I think we're all going to have a lot of fun. And in addition to that, I know machine learning kind of sounds weird being at a React Native conference. I promise uh, I'll tie it all together. And maybe we'll have a couple of surprises here and there. So as mentioned, I am Gant Laborde. I am a uh, teacher. I am a writer. I, many of you have probably read many of my blog posts. Um, also, you might have seen all these stupid icons that I keep having. Uh, if you want some of these as stickers, please come talk to me. I'm happy to go ahead and give you some. And I have to say thanks so much to the people who get to support me and send me all around the world to do fun conferences, uh, the good people at Infinite Red. And I have to say, this is my second time being at React Native EU, so I'm really happy to be back here, and I'm happy to see so many friendly faces again, so this is great. Thank you so much. I want to talk about inspiration for a moment. Uh, I think that all of us are here because we want to do something great. We want to build something fun. We want to enjoy our lives, and we want to be entertained. And in that note, sometimes we have to talk about the technical, and sometimes we have to talk about the silly. And I hope that this kind of balances that out. I know jokes don't really travel too well to Europe, so I'm going to do my best. Things I should talk about is like the Ignite framework, how any of you can build your own boilerplate, or you can use the one we use at Infinite Red. You can start with that today. I've given that talk uh, many, many times, so just Google it if you haven't heard about it before. Things I should not talk about. Uh, there's a website I found out about called tinytuba.com. It's not even written in React. Uh, I shouldn't even bring it up. <laughs> I don't know why I do. It's a problem I have. Things I should talk about. This one is very close to my heart, Solidarity. I actually came up with Solidarity last year at React Native EU, sitting in the audience next to Ken Wheeler. And I was like, man, I'm, I need to solve this problem. And uh, everybody who had talks the second day was sharing it with me starting that code base. If you haven't heard about Solidarity, please look at it. I just did a remote React Native meetup about it. And I'm very proud of it. But I'm not talking about that. Things I should not talk about. The Declaration of Independence. It makes no sense. But uh, by the way, since I am from the US, they let me bring that here. So I was able to go ahead and rent that out. And I brought it with me today. I'll show it to you later. <laughs> Things I should talk about, of course, the great people at Infinite Red and teaching. Things I should not talk about. Crazy machine learning stuff and making jokes. So I can't choose where inspiration strikes but I just got to follow my heart. So today we're talking about machine learning and crazy jokes. So why machine learning, right? Uh, I think that a lot of you hear the buzzwords, and some of you just glaze over. Those of you have already been adopted into it. You're very excited about it. But uh, I had my moment, and I wrote a blog post, and I said, look, this is why I'm excited about machine learning, and I hope it excites you too. And to the day, it is my most popular blog post ever. So I think there's a lot of people out there who don't know what it is, but are inspired by it. So I need to talk about why it exists, the short, short version. And I want to say this. As React Native developers, we have this learn once, write anywhere mentality. Like We have this need to take a problem and then not make it specific to that particular problem. And I think that. In that same vein, in the same spirit that all of you love React Native or inspired by React Native, you can be inspired by machine learning as well. Because what happens here is as we apply it, we are able to use one particular solution. So if you were to write a spell checker in English and all the grammar and all the suggestions, you wrote Grammarly in English, and then you had to apply it over to Polish, You'd have to rewrite everything in this huge, complex problem, unless you used machine learning, in which case you would train it with two different data sets. And then you only wrote one algorithm. And that speaks to all of us. So I think this is going to change the way we all do mobile development. I think that this is going to adapt and make all the code that we write 
something special. So those of you who know a lot about this, I'm going to be talking about the smallest sliver of machine learning. I'm going to be talking about visuals. I'm going to be talking about supervised learning. And then I'm going to make sure that everybody understands it's not magic, right? So the short, short version. This is where I'm going to go super fast. And trust me, if you want to talk about this in great detail, I'm here for you. It's modeled after the neuron for the brain. And instead of a brain, we make machine learning models. And in code, we would make a truth table, whereas that same exact thing can be represented as neurons. And the same kind of inputs can actually give us that kind of output. The math I show here is pre-high school math. This is addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. This isn't complicated. But what about images? Those are just a set of inputs. A 28 by 28 pixel image is just going to be 784 uh, inputs, and then each of those will be a, a grayscale from 0 to 255. And then you can do more advanced images. Here I am asking where am I? Where is this? And here it is identifying, yeah, you're in Rotslav. Right? So this is fantastic. We've come so far because our processing power has finally caught up with us. And then you can also do images inside of images. So you have all these people and they're being identified, including that sad man at the bottom. If you pass that in <laughs> to a machine learning algorithm, there's no way that comes out as a happy person. So I started a library I'd like you all to go ahead and take a look at sometime. And it's called Fun Machine Learning. And it is just like an awesome uh, machine learning thing, but the trick is it has to be fun and silly and stupid because the people who are really doing all this data science math are kind of numbing the rest of us to it when it's actually an exciting technology. So mobile is taking many steps forward. Many of you might have seen all the announcements about machine learning coming through with iOS. And then you can actually, in real time, in video, track faces. And not only track faces, but track the landmarks on faces. And what comes through here is that that means as soon as it's going to Swift and iOS, we get it in React Native, except there are some gotchas. One, dealing with Swift. Uh, I had no idea I was really bad at Swift until I tried to do this talk. Uh, and I looked at lots of different code bases, and I found out I really need to work on my Swift programming if I'm going to write these kinds of libraries. Also, loading Xcode, for many of us as React Native developers, can hurt, uh, and it crashes, and it does weird build things. Hopefully, it doesn't do that to us today. And then I have Mojave. I have uh, Xcode beta. I have iOS betas. So everything I'm running to do my day-to-day -day life is on stuff that hasn't been released yet, and that causes its own kind of madness. If there's anybody out there with iOS beta right now, you know exactly what this went through. And you have the fear of updating before a talk. So I found out I wasn't alone. I actually, there are a couple other people who are interested in it. And Ray Deck actually announced that he's been working on all these great libraries, and he's much better at Swift than I am. And he wrote a library that he announced called React Native Vision. And so the second I saw that, I said, you and me are going to talk. After the conference, I talked to him for a good while. And we came up with all this amazing code. And I'm helping him refine good pieces of it. And he's getting into the parts that actually uh, it's a good system, but it needs more people and more energy. So I think we should play, right? Everybody remembers uh, the app Hot Dog Not Hot Dog, right? Yeah? Which was a great app written specifically just for a TV show and written in React Native, which is amazing. When you take a photo of something and it tells you, is it a hot dog or not? This is a direct, perfect application of the kind of machine learning I can get behind. Well, there's actually a data set out there where some scientist spent somebody's budget money to run five gigabytes of data to train an 80 megabyte model to identify food. So one of the great things we can do, that means that we can use React Native Vision right now to create our own hot dog, not hot dog. So if we were to do this, it would look like so. Here we have a simple uh, structure, and what I'm doing is I'm not even bringing that model in immediately. I have a fetch model that is going off, pulling down the data, and then running that model uh, against some simple 
React Native friendly context. So we have a React, uh, React Native vision provider, and this is the vision framework on iOS that's coming out. And as we can see here, the vision provider is a non-visual component. It's just going to actually give us the provider so that we can consume the aspects that it's picking up. And then we have the default region, which basically means that's the entire structure of what's coming through. And then inside a safe area, we can go ahead and show a camera view. So we can see everything that's going, uh, that we can actually see on the camera. And then we can have the classifications that run through that classifier and tell us exactly what the machine model is seeing in real time. So if this is done properly, and I think it is, that means all of you can see this. If we were to load this hot dog right here, that point out, you see at the bottom, it says hot dog. If I point this at fries, in video, it tells me it's french fries. This is perfect. Now also, let's see, pancakes? That's pancakes. So this is a million times better than hot dog, not hot dog. That's, well, it doesn't know what that is. I think it's foie gras, so that's not right at all. <laughs> let's see, a cheeseburger. Yeah, I think that's a hamburger. And so in just a few moments, with understandable lines of code, We've written hot dog, not hot dog, where we could just tell it instead of that code, we can say, oh, let's go ahead and use uh, a hot dog, or just if it's anything else, we'll display not hot dog. But I think it's more impressive to see what it actually is seeing at that exact moment. And what's really cool is you can point it at your hand. My hand is made out of macarons. That's fantastic. And the other thing I could do is I could point it at, like I said, they gave us the Declaration of Independence, so I could just. Uh oh. I think someone stole the Declaration of Independence. Without that, I think I'm pretty much British, so. Uh, I think I can, you know, I think Ken Wheeler even signed it. Um, let me see about that. I know that they gave me a, a hotline website to go to, declarationofindependencethief.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look here. This is a very official government website. Uh-huh. Look at this guy. This guy would steal it. There he is, a picture of him stealing it. What's going on here? Look at these faces he makes. There he is with some Polish vodka. All right, we need to figure out what's going on here. Oh, we're in luck. They gave us a data model. Well, did I not promise that we could change exactly what our code needs to do in a short amount of time? So if I come over here, Instead, I'll switch the model to point at the data model that we're looking at from that website. Look at me, how fast I type. <laughs> and then the next thing we're going to do is change it to go ahead and grab that data model. We're going to switch out our vision provider for a faces provider and faces. We're going to comment out the vision provider. Instead, we're going to wrap this in a faces provider. And then we're going to also comment that the little uh, indicator down there at the bottom. We're going to go into our camera view and add faces. Then with each face, we're going to have a face, a style, the confidence, and the key. I'm going to pass that directly into uh, a React Native component my friend Frank made. I import that at the top, hit save. And what that means if this updates when I hit save. We should see now, I don't actually have a, uh, I don't have the indicator at the bottom, I have a faces detector. So I think what I need to do now is I need to make sure that none of you have stolen the Declaration of Independence. That's my sure. Vlad, I think I see him. Could you grab him? Could you grab him? Yeah, that guy right there. Yeah, get this guy. Get up here. Let's see. Are you sure it's him? Yes. Yeah, it's blinking green. That's him. And we got the declaration. Yeah. We got the declaration. We got him. I'm Vlad, not him. you're. I'm not him. You are considerably not him. Okay, good. All right. Uh, by the way, everybody, we have to punish him now. Of course, <laughs> we have to bring on the bees. But uh, everybody. 
Fortunately, this is not Nick Cage. This is Matt Hargit, everybody. Give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. Give these two a round of applause for putting up with me. Okay. Now let's see how much time I have left, because this is specifically... Am I over? No, I'm good? All right. Just a quick, quick setup. Uh, this happened uh, by a weird set of coincidences, and now my girlfriend thinks I'm crazy, so I have to tell you all why. Um, first of all, we didn't do anything. We did Where's Waldo. Uh, actually, I can point this up to like seven or eight faces. The lighting's way too dark for me to point it into the audience. Uh, but this is a great idea. So there's no Nick or not model that exists out there in the world. I had to actually do this. And so that meant that I had to scrape the internet for pictures of Nick Cage. Uh, at this moment, people thought I was having problems. Uh, <laughs> then I had to go ahead and get other celebrities to teach it not to be those celebrities. Then I had to write code to remove the faces off of all those images. Uh, any of you should know that that algorithm should be called face off. There's no other way to call that. And then I manually had to check the data for errors because I pulled them off of Google. And I can tell you specifically here, uh, as I'm sitting there deleting images, <laughs> my girlfriend walks behind me and she's like, there's something really, really wrong with you. Also, uh, he, looks like, he looks like Chad Kroger, so I had to find people who he looked like to go ahead and stop that. And then so I ran this uh, in the new iOS training stuff that's coming out with, uh, with Xcode, and it took five hours, but it was five hours of this on my screen uh, and seeing Nick pop up randomly every so often. Uh, and I got some good data, and it looked like my precision was low, but then it showed me an indicator like this, and I said, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. So I started bragging about it. And fortunately enough, a couple of people were like, uh, is this a real thing that you're actually going to do at a conference? And I'm like, yeah, it is. And, and then it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. Uh, so I had to go a layer deeper. And I think that this is like the story I have to share with all of you. Training a model is not something you can do immediately. It's something that you just have to kind of fiddle with and then get new results and fiddle with and get new results. And that's OK. Uh, so I went into NVIDIA digits, and I could see the problem. We're actually seeing no divergence between accuracy and the loss. They're, they're way too close together. So I went out, and I got a, another researcher's work which has 500,000 images trained. You can see on the left the facial average that I used and the one that kind of comes in from the, uh, the front-facing uh, PAM uh, uh, model. And this is a complicated CNN. And then I combined the two so that mine worked after it had identified the facial features. And then, boom, this thing happened. And it was working perfectly. And so I'm running around like an idiot. And I have my buddy printing out pictures. That's my friend Frank, who does the React Native newsletter. If you can see here, this is the day it worked. Face zero, Nick at 70%. And that's a terrible photo. And then Frank is at 99%, not Nick. And so I actually bought a Nick Cage mask off of Amazon. <laughs> which has forever skewed the, the suggestions that I get. And then uh, it was a lot, it was a huge file, so I had to quantize, bring that down, and then kind of set that up, uh, and then, of course, work with conference Wi-Fi. But at the end of the day, I was able to just sit there and point this at the screen. You could see I get a red indicator saying no, and then the bar goes through the roof for Nick. And it's a lot of fun, so I actually, this was insanely rewarding, and I learned so many different things. So I would have to say, yeah, I did go too far. <laughs> I have plenty of links. All of these are available to all of you. I am going to actually make this an app, because why not? <laughs> the website just basically says coming soon, but yeah, you can always go to Declaration of Independence Thief. I have to say thank you to the people who let me go after my passions. Um, I have to say thank you to these conference organizers who let me switch my talk out when that model finally worked. I sent an email that day saying, I have to change my talk. <laughs> I have to give it to this, and I really appreciate that. And then, oh, uh, I have to say thanks to Ray. He is a genius. He is smart. He is friendly. And he made sure that uh, all this stuff works. I have to say thanks to Nick for having a very identifiable face. Uh, up to Vlad and Matt for putting up with shenanigans, uh, for Frank for helping at home, and then thank you to all of you for listening to me. <laughs>